Hello guys, welcome to Dennis Tech Tips. In this video, I am going to show you how to use Audacity. Audacity is a free and open source application that you can use to record and also edit audio. To download Audacity, head over to the official website audacityteam.org. When the site is open, you are going to see something like this. Right here you can see that you can download Audacity on all the major operating systems that is Windows, Mac and Linux. To start the download, click on the download button and your download is going to kick off. When the download is done, click on the EXE to start the installation process. After downloading and installing Audacity, when you open it, you are going to see something like this. Right here you see different buttons and menus that you can work with. I am going to walk you through on what some of these buttons do. To get started with Audacity, you are going to need to make a few configurations. First, you are going to select your audio host. Right here, you get three options. We have MME, Windows Direct Sound, and Windows Wasapi. I'm going to leave it on the default, which is MME. Next, you are going to choose your input device or microphone. So if you have multiple microphones installed, you can choose the one that you want to use to record your voice. I'm going to select my system microphone. Next, you are going to select your recording channel. You can either go with mono or stereo. If you are using a stereo microphone, you can select the stereo, otherwise go with mono. Next, you are going to select your output device or speakers. Once again, if you have multiple speakers connected or installed, you can choose the one that you want to use as your output device. I am going to select my system speaker. We are done up here. Next, you are going to come down here and select your project rate or sample rate. Right here, you can choose a sample rate between 41,000 and 96,000. When you go higher than that, you probably will not hear the difference, but keep in mind that the higher your project rate or sample rate, the higher your file size, and the lower your project rate or sample rate, the lower your file size. I am going to leave my sets to 44,100. When you go back to the top right here and you click on the recording level, it will start to monitor your audio. You can be looking up here to monitor your recording level while you record because the last thing you want is your recording clipping off because if it does, you are going to lose some details in your recorded clip. So to avoid that, make sure that your recording levels does not rise to zero where it turns red. But if you notice that it's clipping off, you can adjust the recording volume down here. If the level is too low, you can increase the level. So that is all the configurations we need to do. It's time to start recording our voice. To show you how to use Audacity and what you can use Audacity to do, I'm going to be putting together a short commercial for this YouTube channel and they add a background song to the voiceover. So let's get started. To start recording my voice, right here I have this huge red button that I can use to start my recording. While I'm recording, maybe for some reasons I want to pause my recording. I can hit on this pause button. To resume the recording, I can also hit on the pause button to resume. When I am done recording, I can use the stop recording button to stop my recording. With that said, now I am going to start recording my voice. Are you having issues figuring out how to use a certain computer program? Dennis Tech Tips provides you with high quality tutorial videos on how to use different computer programs and software. Hurry now and subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so that when a new video gets uploaded, you will be the first to see it. Now that I'm done recording my voiceover, to listen to the playback, I can hit on this play button and it starts to play back my voice over. To pause my playback, I can hit on this pause button once again. And to resume, hit on the pause button again and it will resume the playback right from the point you paused it. If you hit on the play button, the playhead is going to move to the beginning of the clip and it will start all Sorry, over again. Subscribe. You can use the stop button to stop the playback and when you hit on the play button, it's going to move the playhead to the beginning of your playback and it will start all over again. The skip to start button and the skip to end button enables you to skip to the start and the end of your clips, respectively. When I hit on skip to end button, the playhead moves to the end of the track. 
and the skip to start button moves the playhead to the beginning of the track. There are also keyboard shortcuts associated with these buttons. To start recording, you can use the arrow button on your keyboard, the P button to pause, spacebar to playback, the home key to skip to start, and the end key to skip to end. So now let's listen to the playback of the audio I just recorded. Are you having issues figuring out how to use a certain computer program? Dennis Tech Tips provides you with high quality tutorial videos on how to use different computer programs and software. Hurry now and subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so that when a new video gets uploaded, you'll be the first to see it. If you observe at the beginning of the clip, there are a few seconds of silence and I did that on purpose because I want to record the background noise of my environment so that when it's time to get rid of the background noise from my audio, I'll be able to sample the noise from here. So I will advise you do the same whenever you want to record. Stay on playing back your recorded clip. You can use the selection tool to select any part of the clip you want to listen to. By selecting a portion of the clip and then hit on the play button and only the selected portion will be played back. Let's say you want to extend the selection. You can hover your mouse to either end of the selection and you can click and extend or reduce the selection. Or I can hold the shift key on my keyboard and click here and it will extend my selection to that point. I can also do the same over here. You can also play back a portion of your clip by clicking and dragging on the quick play at the top of the clip, just right above the portion you want to listen to, and it will play that portion automatically. Are you having issues figuring out how to use a certain computer program? Still on the selection tool. To select the entire track, you can double click on any part of the track and it will automatically select the entire track. You can also select and copy or cut any part of the clip you wish and then paste it wherever you want. First, you will have to click on the selection tool and then select the portion of the clip you want to copy. After selecting, right here you have the copy button. When you click on that, it will copy the portion you selected and you can paste it wherever you want on the track. Next to the copy button, you also have the cut and paste buttons on the left and right sides respectively. With the cut button, you can cut out the selected portion completely from its current position to some other place on the track by hitting on the paste button. There are also keyboard shortcuts associated with these commands. You have Ctrl C to copy, Ctrl X to cut, and Ctrl V to paste. You can undo and redo with these buttons, or simply press the shortcuts Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y respectively. Right under the selection tool, you have the zoom tool. As the name implies, you can use it to zoom in and out of your track. When the zoom tool is selected and you right click on any portion of the track, it will zoom in. The left click does the opposite which is to zoom out. You also have the zoom in and the zoom out buttons up here. With the zoom in button, you can zoom in and with the zoom out button, you can zoom out wherever the playhead is. You also have the fit selection to width button. This works with the selection tool. What it does is that it fits your selection to the entire width of your screen. While the fit project to width fits the entire project or clip to the width of your screen. And you'll be able to see the end to end of your project. You don't have to scroll from one end to another. Now when you zoom in on your waveform, you see clear details of the waves, like a microscopic view of the waves. At the beginning of this video, when we were configuring Audacity, I mentioned something about sample rates, where I chose 41,000 as my sample rate. These are the samples. When you record your voice using any voice recorder, you are not actually recording your voice, but rather you are recording samples of your voice. It is these samples that come together to form what sounds like your voice. For every sound that the recorder captures, it makes a copy of that sound or a sample of it. It is the same idea with frames in video. When you take a camera and you start to record, you are recording in either 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second or more. A video is made up of multiple still images that are referred to as frames. 
and the frames are displayed simultaneously within a second to create the illusion of motion. The same thing with samples. Multiple audio samples come together to give you an imitation of your voice, which in this case are these samples right here, these little dots. So I'm going to zoom out. Now let's do a few editing on the audio clip. When I play back the clip from the beginning, you'll notice that there's a background noise. I don't know if you can hear it, but there is a background noise in this audio. So let's get rid of that. You are going to select the portion of the audio where you hear the background noise. In this case, I heard it in this area. Make sure my selection tool is selected and then highlight the area. After highlighting the area, you are going to head over to your effects menu. And right here you see that we have a bunch of different effects you can add to your audio. But the one we are most concerned with at the moment is noise reduction. When you click on it, you get this dialog. And right here you see that the process of removing the background noise is divided into two. First, you sample the noise or get the noise profile. And the second step is where the noise is removed. So first hit on this get noise profile button. Next, you are going to select the entire track by either double clicking on the track or pressing the keyboard shortcut Ctrl A. After selecting the entire audio, go back to the effects menu and hit on noise reduction. Now we go for the second step. For the second step, you are going to set the values for the noise reduction, more like how much noise you want to get rid of and the other values. But I'm going to leave it on the default right here, but you can play with these values to see what works best for you. Make sure that reduce is checked. Residue does the opposite of removing background noise. When you are done, click on OK. Now when I listen to the audio again, I can no longer hear the background noise. I want to add background music to the audio to give it some life. To do that, I'm going to head over to my files menu and then hit on the import option. When you do that, you get this dialog and right here you can choose the location where you have the audio you want to import. I have mine on my desktop. Select the music and then click on the open button. Now you see the audio I just imported on the track below. When I listen to the audio once again, Are you having issues figuring out how to use a certain button? You observe that I can barely hear my voice over. The background music is overshadowing my voice over. So I'm going to reduce the volume of the background music. When you look at the left end of the track, you see some controls right there. And among these controls, gain is the one that I can use to adjust the volume of my audio. To reduce the volume of the audio, drag the slider to the left. To increase, drag it to the right. So I'm going to play back both clips while I reduce the gain of the background music until the point where I can hear my voice over. Are you having issues figuring out how to use a certain computer program? Dennis Tech Tips provides you with high quality tutorial videos on how to use different computer programs and software. Hurry now and subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so that when a new video gets uploaded, you'll be the first to see it. Are you having issues figuring out how to use a certain computer program? Dennis Tech Tips provides you with high quality tutorial videos on how to use different computer programs and software. Hurry now and subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so that when a new video gets uploaded, you'll be the first to see it. So that's fine. I can now hear my voice over. I want to make a few editing on my audio. But while I'm on that, I don't want to hear the background music. So I'm going to mute it by hitting on this mute button on the track. And when I hit on the play button, I can no longer hear the background music, only the voice over. Next to the mute button, you have the solo button. With this, if you have multiple tracks 
and you just want to listen to one of them, you can hit on the solo button on the track you want to listen to. And all tracks in the project will be muted, but the one you want to listen to. If you look at these waves, you will observe that this set of waves is a little bit bigger than this. Which means that these are more audible than this because I probably backed off my microphone while I was recording. So we are going to need to amplify them. To do that, first I'm going to highlight these waves and play them back. So that's when a new video gets uploaded. When the playback is done, I'm going to head over to the playback levels. And you see that the playback picked at about negative 3, negative 4. Let's just leave it at negative 3. I know you are wondering why we are doing this. You will see in a bit. Now highlight the waves you want to amplify. Head over to the effects menu. And click on the amplify option. And you get this dialog. And here you will input either the amplification value or the new peak amplitude. So we have the new peak amplitude, which is the value we just got from the playback level. So I'm going to input that right here. Hit on OK. Now when I listen to the playback, hurry now and subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so that when a new video gets uploaded, you'll be the first to see it. Both sides are balanced. Next, I am going to add a compressor to the audio. To do that, I'm going to highlight the entire track, head over to the effects menu, and then click on the compressor option. Down here, you can set different values to see what works best for you. For now, I'm going to leave this on the default and then hit on OK. Now, I am going to unmute the background music. Let's hear what it sounds like. Are you having issues figuring out how to use a certain computer program? Dennis Tech Tips I want this part where I said, are you having a hard time using a certain computer program to be right before the drum kicks in in the background music? There are two ways I can go about this. I can either highlight and delete some silence parts in the beginning of the clip, so this part will move forward, or I can use the time shift tool to adjust the audio. With the time shift tool selected, I can adjust the position of my audio and it will either make the audio shorter or longer depending on the direction you are adjusting. So I'm going to move this forward a bit. I think that's okay. Now let's listen to it again. Are you having issues figuring out how to use a certain computer program? Dennis Tech Tips provides you with high quality. Now this second part is coming in too sudden. I want it right where the drums kicks in. So I'm going to have to move it back a bit. Again, there are two ways I can do that. First, I can place my playhead right here in the middle. Head over to the edit menu. Scroll down to clip boundaries. And hit on the split option. And it will split the clip into two. After the clip is split, I can now use the time shift tool to position my clip right where I want it. The second way to do this is to place the playhead in the middle of the clip. Head over to Generate menu and click on Silence. So I'm going to generate a few seconds of silence to move the clip to the position I want. Choose a time format, hours, minutes and seconds. And then put 2 seconds in here. Click on OK. Now when I listen to the playback, Dennis Tech Tips provides you with high quality tutorial videos on how to use different computer programs and software. That's fine. The next thing I want to do is to make the volume of the background music decrease when I am talking. And when I stop talking, the volume will rise again. And when I start talking, it will reduce again. To achieve this, I am going to use an effect called Auto Dock. But first, I am going to change the positions of these tracks if I want this to work. So I am going to move the background music and place it above the voiceover. So if you want to apply auto dock on a track, make sure that the track is at the top of other tracks. So I'm simply going to click and drag this to the top and that's it. To apply auto dock, first I'm going to highlight the entire audio clip. 
Go over to Effects. Click on Auto Dock. And you get this dialog where you can enter different values based on how low you want the volume to be when you are talking and how long you want it to remain like that before rising again. But I'm going to leave all these default values I have right here and click on OK. Immediately you see that the waves have changed. Right above the places where I'm talking, the waves are smaller than where I am not talking. So let's hit on the playback button to see what we have. Are you having issues figuring out how to use a certain computer program? Dennis Tech Tips provides you with high quality tutorial videos on how to use different computer programs and software. Hurry now and subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so that when a new video gets uploaded, you'll be the first to see it. That sounds good. Next, I'm going to delete the remaining parts of the background music which are not parts of this project. Highlight it and hit on the delete button on the keyboard. And then I'm going to add a fade out at the end of the background song. Highlight it, head over to effects menu and select fade out. When I play this back, best to see it. You hear the background music fading away as the end. I am done with my project. It's time to export it. To export, head over to the file menu and hover your mouse to the export option. And right here, you have multiple file formats you can choose from. You have MP3, you have WAV, OGG and the rest. I'm going to go with MP3. Choose the location where I want the file to be saved. Select my desktop and give it a file name. I'm going to name this Dennis Tech Tips and then click on export. And here you get a warning saying that the track will be mixed and exported as one. That's fine. Click on OK. And right here you can add metadata to the audio. Like the artist name, track title, album title and the rest. You can fill this up if they are necessary. Otherwise, click on OK. And I have my clip on my desktop. So that is it for this video guys. That is how to use Audacity to record and also edit audio. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like. To see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.